It is my greatest pleasure to welcome you to tell you university graduation for the academic year 2021 and 22. I am Reverend Dr. Justifier Ni Noi Okwe, the past president of the Ghana Baptist Convention Ministers Conference and currently serving TNET International as the Anglophone Regional Director with oversight over Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and the Gambia. I'm also a past student, first, the first batch of the Doctor of Ministry students of TNET International and Telio University. I welcome you to this virtual graduation and bring you greetings from the board, the faculty, staff, and trainers that are part of the T network serving students in over 40 countries in Africa, Asia, and the Americas. Together, our goal is to finish the Great Commission as mandated by the Lord Jesus Christ in anticipation of his soon coming. You are most welcome, and God bless you. Our mission at TNED International is to finish the Great Commission through raising up indigenous leaders, initiating church planting movements, and multiplying disciple makers in each of the nearly 240 countries of the world. Our model for ministry is Jesus' command and design for disciple making from Matthew 28. Jesus' last words to the church were the Great Commission go and make disciples of all nations. Now that command was meant to be finished, and Jesus promised that it would be finished. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14 states, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end shall come. Telio is a Greek word that means to bring to a close or to finish, to complete or fulfill a command. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul used telio in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, where he said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race. And then again, in John chapter 19, verse 30, as Jesus died on the cross for our salvation, he said, it is finished. Telio University is a global distance education institution, and we're committed to equipping pastors and church leaders with world-class practical ministry training without leaving their churches and networks of ministry relationships. Telio captures our passion for finishing the Great Commission by being and making disciples of all nations. We are honored to have you join us on this great adventure.
We are honored to welcome Dr. Keith Lai as our keynote speaker for this graduation. Dr. Lai has been senior pastor of Covenant Presbyterian Church in Singapore since 1992. He also served as Synod Moderator for the Presbyterian Church of Singapore and the President of the National Council of Churches of Singapore. Dr. Lai is a lifelong disciple maker and as a TNET trainer, he helped to launch TNET training centers in the country of Sri Lanka. We welcome Dr. Keith Lai from Singapore. Hello everyone, congratulations to all the graduates. After all your years of hard work and today you're reaping your reward. I'd like to share this, uh, this message that has been on my heart for a while. And I call it Everyday Revival and Everyday Commission. Now, recently in my church, I have been encouraging my members to see the Great Commission as an everyday commission. Uh, in other words, to make it a lifestyle and a regular, intentional reaching out to others. But the challenge is still, how can we make the everyday commission a reality? How can we have that long-term sustained, uh, prolonged uh, zeal and, and commitment to see the Great Commission finish? And I believe that it has to come from the experience of everyday revival. And I'd like to uh, share that in the Bible, there is this pattern that occurs again and again when the disciples experience a fresh touch of the Lord, experience a fresh uh, breaking in of the kingdom of God, they are thrust out into greater passion and boldness to preach the gospel. You know, after a while, we are all familiar with how when uh, we've been plowing the field for a while, we grow fatigued and weary and tired. And sometimes we uh, lose heart because of the opposition that we face. And as Christians, we experience even this fatigue in finishing the Great Commission. And so I believe the way that God wants us to continue to experience sustained zeal and passion to finish the Great Commission is to experience everyday revival. And I believe this is what we find in the scripture, especially in Acts, where in Acts chapter 2, in verse 46, it says, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. So this is, in a sense, a description of how they experienced a daily revival. Coming together, they experienced the favor of God and favor with people. But then what is interesting is in verse 47, the outcome of this everyday daily revival is this, the Lord added to their number day by day, those who are being saved, Acts chapter 2, verse 24. And so we see this again repeated in Acts chapter 4 when Peter and John were arrested and then somehow the Lord worked miraculously and they were set free. And then they continued to pray for great bonus. And as they gathered to pray, the whole place was shaken and then they went forth with greater bonus to preach the gospel. And so the experience of revival is imperative, is important in order to have this sustained zeal and passion to finish the Great Commission. The church in Acts was living in revival by making it an everyday lifestyle in the normal Christian life. They were in a habit of igniting revival fire daily by coming together regularly to prayer, communion, and devotion to the apostles' teaching. And so it is important first, as we understand revival, what is a proper understanding of revival? You know, in most books that you read about revival, there are basically two extreme historical understanding of revival. And in fact, they are both extremes that we need to avoid. One is to think that revival is entirely up to God, and it is up to God to bring it about. Nothing can happen without 
him uh, bring it about. Uh, we cannot make it happen, in other words. And the other extreme would be uh, those who think that they can plan and organize and make it happen as and when we desire revival. It's like turning on a switch. So what is the balanced view about revival? I like the quote from uh, Tim Keller, uh, who saw revival in his church in, in New York. And this is what he says, a, a revival is a work of God in which the church is both beautified and empowered because the normal operations of the Holy Spirit, which is the conviction of sin, enjoyment of grace, and access to the presence of God are intensified. The essence of real revival is not the extraordinary operations of the Spirit, but the ordinary operation of the Spirit. We tend to gravitate towards the supernatural operation and manifestation of the Holy Spirit. But Tim Keller is trying to encourage us to, to see that no, most of the time, it is God intensifying the ordinary means of grace to bring about a great wave of renewal in our church where believers are awakened and people come to know Christ. Jonathan Edwards is one of the most well-known uh, scholar uh, and revivalist in a sense who saw two revivals in his lifetime. And one was local, contained in New England uh, in the mid-1730s. The other, six years later, was uh, transatlantic and became known as the Great Awakening. And Edward's important observation of revival is that it is not a move from the ordinary to the extraordinary, so much as a move from the subordinary to the ordinary. We come alive again. And this is what we see in the work of God throughout church history, recorded for us in different seasons, different periods. And so the focus on the ordinariness and everydayness of revival through employing all the means of grace that God has given to us needs to be recaptured, need to be recovered for, by us because we tend to gravitate towards the uh, supernormal manifestation, the extraordinary uh, uh, manifestations and we have minimized the power of the gospel itself. And what most historians would believe uh, about revival is that uh, it's a recovery of the grace gospel and experiencing the deep penetration of the gospel in our lives. It's our union with Christ uh, to bring us to power uh, to, of renewal through justification, sanctification, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And so what does that mean for us as uh, TNET trainers and equippers? I believe it's very important for us to pray for everyday revival for ourselves and also for our students and our training centers. Because it is this everyday revival that will sustain us for the long haul. Just as Ezekiel uh, was commanded to pray, come from the four winds of breath and breathe on us that we may live so that we may be rise up as a mighty army for God. And then secondly, we also have to pray that the Holy Spirit will ignite the ordinary means of grace in the word, in prayer, in fellowship, in worship, in fasting, all the grace that God wants to shower on us through all these spiritual disciplines. We need to pray that God will intensify uh, this by the working of the Holy Spirit so that they will not be mechanical, and legalistic. And we can pray with the psalmist with a sense of expectation. And I like to quote from Psalm 5 uh, in uh, Eugene Peterson's message, the paraphrase. It says, listen, God, please pay attention. Can you make sense of these ramblings, my groans and cries? King God, I need your help. Every morning you hear me at it again. Every morning I lay out the pieces of my life on your altar and watch for fire to descend. And I think the psalmist capture what it means to experience everyday revival, fresh fire, fresh 
rain from God, fresh wind of the Spirit blowing in the, our life, into our lives as well as all those that we are training. So may God ignite in us this uh, belief and this expectation that God wants us to experience revival daily so that we will continue to finish the Great Commission. Amen. Father, we pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that indeed you would ignite in us this passion for renewal, revival, and fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit in our lives on a daily basis. And believe that as we are awakened day by day, we will be fire up, Lord, uh, to finish the Great Commission. And we pray this for ourselves and for all our students or all our training centers. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Greetings. I'm uh, Dr. Richard Ensrud. I'm the African Continent Director for Teen Ed International, as well as the Dean of Student Life for Telio University. And before we present the graduates, I want to give you a general idea of what these students have accomplished. Telio University confers degrees based on the curriculum created, tested over the past 30 years by TNED International. This curriculum provides an intensive training and coaching process for pastors and prospective church planters. It requires participants remain active in church ministry so that the principles are applied immediately in the local church context. Pastors participate in training centers in their own countries near where they live and serve they complete a new semester term every four months for three or more years. They implement rigorous ministry assignments designed to equip them with the essential core knowledge of finishing the Great Commission, Bible study methods, evangelism, saturation church planting, church health and growth, and building a disciple-making church. Every pastor and church leader in our programs is equipped to train their congregation and be part of a teaching team to mentor and assist other pastors in the same manner they have been. After course five in the fifth term, students continue their studies while facilitating course one for new students in new training centers. Thus begins an ongoing leadership development process and multiplication of training toward finishing the Great Commission in their country within their lifetime. You know, typically graduates of our core programs have created a plan for using all the ministries of the church to make mature disciples, to increase the church's weekly giving by 75% to 200%, significantly increase increase the uh, evangelism growth of their church, mobilize 50% or more of the church members to join a weekly intentional disciple-making small group, seeing uh, 10 to 40% of church members graduate to a higher spiritual maturity level each year, and develop effective disciple-making lay leaders in the church through an apprentice training process. They've planted one to two new house churches or evangelistic home groups every year using trained lay leaders. They've experienced numerical church growth of 50% or more in those three years. They've joined a team to help facilitate a new TNET training center where other pastors and church planners can collaborate in effective disciple making to finish the Great Commission in their churches, cities, and regions. Telia University graduates have the, the satisfaction of knowing that they are participating in an ongoing process of leadership development and disciple-making multiplication so that the Great Commission can be finished in their country within their lifetime. Now it is my great honor to commend these students to receive the degrees that they have earned. Distinguished guests, families of graduates, faculty, staff, and friends. 
On behalf of the faculty, administration, and board of Telio University, I am pleased to present to you the graduating class of Telio University 2021 and 2022. Congratulations on this momentous achievement. Greetings. I'm Ron Burgett, representing the TNET School of Ministry. Today, we have nearly 800 graduates from 21 countries in Africa and Asia. We will begin by acknowledging students from three countries who are recipients of the Diploma of Pastoral Ministry. On behalf of the faculty and board of directors of Telia University, we present the following students, the Diploma of Pastoral Ministry. I'm Richard Wong representing the TNET International School of Theology. I'm pleased to introduce bachelor's degree graduates from more than 20 countries in Africa, Asia, and the Americas. Taylor University recognizes the following students as having completed sufficient requirements to become candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Pastoral Ministry.
I'm Dr. Joe Olashe, representing the TNET Graduate School of Ministry. I'm very pleased to introduce master's degree graduates from the countries of Africa, Asia, and the Americas. Telio University recognizes the following students as having completed sufficient requirements to become candidates for the degree of the Master of Divinity. I'm Dr. David Dury, Provost and Academic Dean for Telio University, and I'm pleased to introduce to you the Doctor of Ministry degree graduates from Africa and Asia. Telio recognizes the following students as having completed sufficient requirements to receive the Doctor of Ministry degree. First, Andrew Tay. Andrew is the president of the Intentional Disciple-Making Network in Singapore, 
which trains and coaches pastors and church planters to multiply disciple-making churches to finish the Great Commission in 13 countries in Asia. He helped start TNET training centers in Singapore, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Thailand, Pakistan, Nepal, and the Philippines. His ministry project dissertation documented his launching of TNET training centers for pastors in Nepal. Next is Patrick Ramocha. Patrick is founder and senior pastor of Share the Fire Ministries, where he has discipled pastors and planted more than 15 churches. Patrick has a heart for Christ and his church and his nation, and has served as a member of the Evangelical Fellowship of Botswana since 1997. As a John C. Maxwell certified coach, he's found his niche coaching, mentoring, and consulting church for church revitalization and leadership. Patrick's ministry project dissertation documented the benefits of coaching and mentoring in launching TNET training centers for pastors in Botswana. This year, we are pleased to grant the Honorary Doctor of Divinity degree. An Honorary Doctor of Divinity is conferred upon distinguished pastors, evangelists, ministers, or other Christian leaders who have significantly contributed to advancing Christ's church in finishing the Great Commission. Though not a research or an academic degree, the Honorary Doctor of Divinity is awarded in recognition of outstanding achievement and extraordinary fruitfulness in religious ministry. The Board of Directors of Telio University, in recognition of distinguished Christian service, have conferred the Honorary Doctor of Divinity degree on the following Christian leaders. End of Formumbe Johnson Zambu. Johnson has served as the TNET Country Director for Cameroon since 2006 and is the TNET Regional Director for French-speaking countries in West and Central Africa. He has launched and coached TNET training and expansion in Senegal, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Benin, Togo, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Rwanda, Niger, and Burundi, where he continues to coach and support TNET country directors. Johnson also served, serves as lead pastor of a large church in the English-speaking region of Cameroon. He experienced near death when trapped in his car as it was firebombed by a local French-speaking militia. And while traveling for TNET was robbed multiple times and recently kidnapped. Still, Pastor Johnson remains intensely committed to expanding TNET training to finish the Great Commission in Africa. Johnson has two earned master's degrees, one from Cameroon Baptist Seminary and another from the Minnesota Graduate School of Theology. He is married to his wife, Patience, and they have four children and one grandson. Next is Mulugeta. Ashagre and Ashar. Mulugeta is the co-leader for TNET Ethiopia and the East African Regional Director for TNET International. Mulugeta became a Christian and was baptized in a Brethren Church in Ethiopia in 1981. After earning a degree in theology and ministering as an evangelist, he served for 25 years as the denominational leader of the Ethiopian Christian Brethren Church. As a gifted leader with a passion for church planning, Mulugeta saw his denomination grow from 21 to 235 local churches. Mulugeta and three other TNET trainers launched TNET training centers in Ethiopia in 2013 and expanded the TNET pastor training program to over 1,500 participants in Ethiopia. Mulugeta has helped launch TNET training in South Sudan and supports the country directors in training in Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. He and his wife, Alem, 
have three grown children and two grandchildren. Finally, we have Timothy Kashweka. Timothy Kashweka became a believer in 1981, the year he completed high school and planted his first church in 1983 while in Bible college. Timothy earned a diploma and a BA in theology and later a master of ministry degree. Timothy has been a pastor, church planter, Bible college lecturer, and mission movement leader within his denomination and beyond. He served as country director for the AD 2000 movement and was director of revival and church planting in the Zambia Intercessory Network for several years. In 2004, Timothy particip participated in the first African TNET training center in Chingola, Zambia. He helped multiply TNET training throughout Zambia and became the Zambia TNET country leader in 2009. Timothy helped launch TNET training throughout uh, Africa in places like Eswatini, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Namibia, and South Africa. Since 2018, Timothy has served as the Southern African Regional Director for TNET International. Timothy is married to Catherine and has two girls and one boy. They also suffered the sudden death of his youngest son 10 years ago. It is our privilege to confer honorary Doctor of Divinity awards to these three outstanding individuals. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduating class of 2021-2022. me to give you one final charge as we conclude. And I want to give you a charge from 2 Timothy um, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, which say this, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, these entrust to faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. So the conclusion Paul has as he encourages this now young equipped pastor Timothy is that he would be strong. This is an imperative. This is a command. Don't be afraid. Don't be meek. Don't be anxious. Be, be courageous. Be strong. And, and it's in a passive voice, which means it's something that as we're strengthened, it, it, it's a strength that comes to us from somewhere else. It's the strength that comes from Jesus Christ, from the word of God. It's not on our own strength, on our own merit, but the Holy Spirit empowers us. So he's saying in a sense, rest in that strength that's been given to you to finish the Great Commission. And then he says, as you're strong, as you let the Holy Spirit strengthen you, as you rest in that strength, you will entrust to others what you've learned. So it means hand it over for safekeeping. Don't keep it to yourselves, but make disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples until the Great Commission is finished in every country of the world, with every people group, with every ethnos, every language, so that Jesus Christ can be supremely glorified. So rest in the strength that God's given you, and don't give up in your mission to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. Let me pray for you a prayer that comes from Ephesians chapter 3 as we conclude. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love 
may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Thank you.